Today I want to go through the electrochemistry post-lab calculations. Now before I go through some specifics, uh, I want to just go through a general calculation and overview of electrochemistry. You're going to be using the Nernst equation really in every part. So every part feels pretty similar until you get to the very last part. So I'll go through this overview and then I'll tell you what to do in each part. First of all, electrochemistry. Every reaction you're doing, because you're measuring a voltage in lab, is spontaneous. If you were not measuring a voltage, it's, uh, then it wouldn't be spontaneous. But it, they're all spontaneous. That means delta G is negative. Because of this equation, you know that the E is positive. So in lab, sometimes because you're going to mix up what you think is the anode, what you think is the cathode, you might measure a negative voltage. That doesn't mean it's non-spontaneous. They're all spontaneous. You, just what you think is the anode is the cathode and vice versa. Okay? So remember, all the E's, the potentials, need to be positive. So if you get a negative, flip the anode and the cathode in order to do the future calculations. Now let's go through a sample calculation and then you're going to see they're all like this. So here's just a generic equation with silver and copper. Let's assume that the silver and the copper concentrations are both 0.5 molar. In lab, they're slightly different, I think 0.1. So here's the shorthand notation of the cell. Again, uh, if I got a negative voltage when I measured it this way, see here, this is the anode, this is the cathode. That means I've got it flipped if I get a negative. But I got a positive in lab, so that means this is in the right space and that's in the right space. All right, so to get the E standard, the, the standard potential, you always go cathode minus anode. That's uh, this cathode value minus this anode value. You might be wondering, where did I find these values? You can look, up, look them up in a table in your book, use Google, whatever. These are just values that you can find. Okay, I subtract those, and then I get 0.462. So that's my E standard. You go over here to the Nernst. Here's your typical Nernst equation. This is with LN. Okay, if that's base E, if you use log, L-O-G, that's base 10, so this coefficient will be slightly different. We're going to use the LN uh, version of the formula that are both the same, doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, the potential equals the standard potential, that's this one, minus 0 0.0257 over N. N is the number of electrons that will cancel out in this equation, which will end up being 2 if you balance the redox. And the natural log of Q, this is from Chem 2B, it's Q is products over reactants. So products, copper over silver squared because of the 2 right there. So that's what you see here because both concentrations are 0.5, this would be the calculation. So I put this in for Q, uh, I've got 2 there and this I just found. So my E is 0.453. Uh, so if I measure this in lab, I should get a value similar to this. This is my theoretical value. When I measure in lab, that's my experimental. These this two should lie. The calculation that I did, just did is pretty similar to part 2B. Okay? You're going to have to do exactly this. Yeah, you're going to find E standard. Okay? You're going to find that value. You're going to measure this and then you're going to compare it with your theoretical value. So theoretically you calculate this, uh, and you're going to compare that to what you measure. They should be fairly close. Okay, now how about the other parts? Well part 2A, okay, the part you do right before this, is what's called a concentration cell. What you're going to notice is you're going to have the same thing here and here. So for example, copper is the anode, copper is the cathode. So what does that mean? Well, when you do that part, E standard will be zero because the cathode and the anode are both the same thing. So there, you're going to get a zero for E standard right there. But that doesn't mean the rest of it is zero. Okay? So you still have to put in the number of electrons that are canceled out. In the case of copper 2 plus, that'd be two. And then Q, uh, again, you write out the reaction. These concentrations will not necessarily be equal. So you get a value for Q and you'll get a value for E. So even though you have the same metal as the cathode and anode, if they have different concentrations, you get some sort of E standard or voltage that you'll measure. So you're going to calculate uh, a theoretical value and compare it with your measure. 
Again, it's just a concentration cell. The only thing that will do is put a zero here. The rest of the calculation will be the same. So these are all your part two calculations will look just like this, or this part of part two. Part one is going to use the same calculation, but be slightly different. In the case of part one, what you're going to do is you're going to use the Nernst again. Okay, same exact thing. You're going to measure this value and then put that number in right here. Okay? And then you're going to calculate this value. So this will be known. You're going to calculate this. You're not going to go through this thing, even though you could. <laughs> you're not going to. Just for fun, they want you to calculate this given this measured value. This part of the calculation will be identical to before. Just you have to change it based on your given reaction. So that will be uh, part one. The other thing you're going to do in part one, once you have E standard, remember you're solving for that in part one, you're going to go over here. You're going to have E standard and they're going to give you one of these two values, either the cathode and the anode, and they want you to solve for the other one. So again, you're going to have this from the nerds, they'll give you one of these two values and you'll solve for the other one. So that's the essence of part one.